Greetings ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the new speed presented to you by the dislike and survivor. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow keeps you sharp and in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news, follow. The African Robotic Network was established in 2012 in Ghana to enhance robotic education research and industry in Africa. But a year earlier, a Ugandan Solomon King Benge had found the Fundi Boats to teach young students how to solve local problems using robots. Fundi Boats is now active in 15 schools across Uganda and expansion into other African countries is part of its agenda. Students as young as 6 years can attend these sessions which usually take place after school time durations. The initiative is spread across schools in Kampala and Bulu with experienced mentors who encourage and show students what to do. Apart from teaching technical skills and offering robotics training, students are also taught the importance of peer-to-peer -peer learning. It now has a team in the northern Uganda building an automated farm program. The the system includes an irrigation system for crops on the farm. It also has a temperature monitoring solution in place to make sure power feeds don't overheat and go bad in the process. The students are also working on another project using robotics to come up with an automatic seed dispenser to feed pigs. Most of these robots don't require a lot of money to build because the use of recycled materials is encouraged. Fundi boats also hold holiday camps which usually last two weeks tasking students to implement on their required skills in robotics. The skill set the students gain from the experience is priceless. Rwondo Island has been described as a floating island sanctuary, providing protection to endangered animals naturally. The island was identified as a game reserve in 1965 to ensure that the endangered animals survived and thrived. Between 1964 and 1974, a lot of animals on the endangered list were introduced to the island by Bernard Brismek, a German zoologist. With the island's primate-friendly impenetrable forest, it offered a safe haven for the animals and brought in the tourists. The island's indigenous antelope, otters and velvet monkeys were the only animals present before Bernard introduced other species. The chimpanzees introduced on the island of Burwondo were rescued from poachers in Uganda, Tanzania and Congo. These infants were used in zoos across the world and for the purpose of biomedical research when they got old. But Bernard returned 17 fortunate chimps to safety. Today the original population has grown to about 50. It's the world's only successful introduction of chimpanzees from captivity. Although the black rhinos that were introduced on the island never survived, the colobus monkey, the elephant and the African grape parrot have thrived. The island is very hospitable because it has a few predators and apart from a few national park staff, it's also uninhabited with no squatters, making it the safest habitat on Tanzania's waters. Presidential assassinations are not welcome in a democracy. Our reporter Jay Centino is here with the details. Police arrested Ahmed Adib, Vice President of the Maldives, on suspicion links to the presidential court incident. The plus injured the wife, the bodyguard and the aide of President, Adib was taken to a detention center on an island. After returning from an official visit, he was awaited by sirens. The explosion occurred September 28th on board the speedboat. President Kayoma and his wife were returning from the airport. Authorities initially thought it was a mechanical failure, not an assassination. Later they launched a criminal investigation and said the blast was an attempt on the president's life. He was unharmed because he wasn't sitting on the seat with the explosion device. It was apparent that Kayoma suspected the vice president. Weeks after the blast, he raided homes and businesses of Adib's associates and he sacked the defense minister as well as the police commissioner. I'm Jay Santino, reporting for Newsbeat. Thank you Jay Santino for that report. Uganda is on the brink of an outbreak. Cholera is knocking on the door in the southern western districts. In Hoima, six people have died and another 130 hospitalized. The outbreak began on a landing site and then continued to lake out but on the different two sites. The reason of course is poor sanitation. Not washing hands and defecating in the open with no pit latrines. People find another way. They go to the trenches but there comes heavy rain and the fecal matter goes into the lake and then people will drink it the very next day. But how can people be healthy with no access to safe water? The nearest borehole was six kilometers further. But some like the Ministry of Health Secretary Brother Osman Lubwago prefers to blame the unfortunate events on the strength of the El Nino. But that's just the beginning. Expect mudslides and flooding. Like Bududa people lost their lives, houses and all food supplies. That was the news on the beat. Next week will be another hit, still ladies like and survivor, reporting live and direct with love and respect.
Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat.